Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of DCF Live coming to you guys from the DCF studio here in the beautiful south side of Chicago. Beautiful summer day here. June the 19th, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, we are live! Every time, every time it gets me hyped up. The only thing that might get me a little bit more hyped up is if I had the, uh, the music that the Bulls, they used it in the 90s, they still use it today. But the uh, the run out music with that little intro for uh, MJ and Scotty and the and the gang, nothing else could get you more hyped. So hopefully everybody's doing good. We got a we got a fun show today. We're gonna have some fun. 96, 98 people already in the chat. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Uh, I want to start by talking to you guys about our next episode of reviewing your customs. What we want to do is let me go ahead and actually pull this up here. I made a little flyer for uh, Instagram stories yesterday. What I want to do for episode number eight is, let's see here, switch to the phone. Cool, there we go. So reviewing your customs episode eight, first timers. Uh, I, I'm really, really excited about the possibility of this episode. And I think it could be a lot of fun because what I really want, what I what what I always envision reviewing your customs to be is me critiquing other people's artwork so that you can learn from other people's mistakes. You can see how other people can improve and whatnot. And uh, truth be told, this episode specifically that was just posted on Wednesday was, was almost like you could consider it an, an all-star lineup. I mean, tremendous, tremendous artists, people that are uh, doing some big things in the industry. And so for the most part, uh, I actually have all the shoes here still. I'll gladly show them to you guys. But there wasn't, um, to me, I, I, wanna, I want it to be more, more beneficial for everybody from a teaching aspect. So it's hard for me to critique pairs that are so great. There's little things that, you know, I could say here and there, but I think overall people would find it kind of nitpicky, even though that's kind of what the show is about. I mean, for example... If we have here, this actually got cut from the video. If we take a look at this pair of uh, the Simpsons Air Force One Highs from O. Dot Worthen, uh, just one little minor thing that I might potentially say is on this little strap, this little back heel tab on the Air Forces, you know, nobody's going to see it, but since I'm looking for imperfections, there's a little bit of white peeking through. Uh, that's going to be hard for you guys to see. Let me see. How can I kind of get that to appear? Behind the strap? Nope. Nope. This also shows how, how good it is. You know what I mean? But uh, you can kind of see it there. Very minimally. But if you look right in here, there's still a little bit of the white leather peeking behind there. But again, that's sort of nitpicky because this is an awesome pair. You know what I mean? So what I really want to do for episode 8 is have people who are painting sneakers for the first time, the first pair that you've ever painted. That's what I really want the episode to be about. So um, we've already had uh, 50 plus submissions since I just posted it yesterday. So here you can see the info. If you're interested, send me an email, contact at hazusink.com. Make sure the subject line says first timer or first timers. And that's how I'm gonna be picking from there. There's already some great options, but I think it would be really cool to just review people who are um, painting shoes for the first time because there will be so many, it, it's going to be incredibly beneficial for them to learn on things they could do better, whether it be designing, um, uh, you know, perhaps planning out your design a little bit better, or if it were to be, you know, the cleanliness, touching up edges, things like that. Um, and it's awesome because I've, I've sort of skimmed through, I need to actually sit down and, and really focus my brain on which four pairs I think will have the best learning opportunity for everybody, but I've quickly skimmed through some of the submissions and I'm already really excited because I'm already looking at them like, wow, there's a lot I could talk about here that people will really be able to learn from. So, um, hopefully we're looking good and sounding good. Let me know guys. Hopefully, uh, you know, mic, visual, everything's looking good, sounding good. I didn't even get a chance to ask that one, but uh, we have a super chat from Johnny's Life. Thank you, buddy. Uh, it says, your gray color idea worked. So Johnny had a pair of uh, Air Force Ones that we uh, looked at in last week's show, and um, he had tried doing something on the swoosh, and then I think he might have had to acetone something off. 
some of the he painted the swoosh blue and some of the paint got on some of the areas he might have used dye something like that but anyways i told him you know you once you've kind of gotten acetone or, or paint onto certain panels you're not really going to be able to get it off so i told him it might be a good idea for you to just go ahead and um paint it gray or something like that still keep it pretty neutral and uh he says that works so good to hear johnny good to hear so yeah uh like i said if you guys are interested in episode eight of reviewing your customs first timers only i've had a lot of people ask you know could it be hey i'm just starting could it be my third pair or something like that there's something special about your first pair so um you know i mean potentially down the road we could have an episode where it's all you know beginners where maybe that qualifies your first year of customizer or something like that but there's something special about your first pair so uh, that will be uh, that will be a cool one. So other than that, uh, let's see. Let's switch here. Another thing that I want to talk to you guys about is let's get this pulled up. Let's see here. The DCF Floral Contest, our third contest. I am so excited about this one. Floral will always just uh, it'll just have a special place in my heart as an awesome theme, a theme that can work great on any shoe. A theme that is limitless because you will never run out of inspiration uh, on ways you could do floral. There's what I'm so excited about this is right off the bat when you think of floral, there's going to be so many different artistic takes on floral. What does that mean? You know, some people are going to do realism, and realism is going to look different depending on the shoe you're doing it on. Uh, you know, like if you're painting on canvas versus if you're painting on leather. Now, there's going to be uh, hopefully some some uh, surrealism, some abstract floral art. Hopefully there will be some uh, tattoo floral art, old school traditional roses. Um, one of my favorite pairs I've ever done that I've showed you guys a bunch is a uh, pair of Jordan 1s. I take the colorway of the uh, Nike SB Paris Dunk Lows. And um, I translate that onto, I put my own artistic uh, spin on it, and I do an abstract floral print. So I have an all-over black rose print on top of all of the Nike SB uh, Paris colorway. And that's just one of my favorite pairs ever. So I love, I love floral. I'm so excited about this one. Um, all of the rules are here on the page. Similar to our other contest, it is going to be... Um, Open to anybody. It could be on any shoe. It could be on sandals. It could be on any piece of footwear. And the deadline is Friday, July 31st. Once that hits, we're going to review all of the submissions. We most likely will do a video just like we did for the horror theme and the Christmas contest. Depending on the amount of entries, that might need to be shifted to a live stream where we review all of them. We'll see how many entries there are. But that's something uh, that potentially might happen. And then from there, we are going to pick the final four. And uh, that's subjective, but it's up to us to pick the final four. Those four then send in their shoes for an episode of Reviewing Your Customs, and then you guys will vote on the winner. Now, the one thing that I hope to change up on the voting um, from previous contest is I want to have a way where basically you can only vote once. The reason I haven't done that in the past is because I've wanted as little friction as possible between... Um, Anybody watching the video voting and uh, just as little friction there as possible because as soon as some of the other options that I looked into, you know, you're going to have to enter your email before you can vote or create a username, anything like that. And I, and I sort of didn't want to do that because, like I said, I didn't want any of that friction. I wanted people to just be able to vote. But I think that could potentially be viewed as there's uh, potential for that to be abused because people can vote as many times as they want. I mean, that's kind of maybe that's a maybe that could be viewed as a good thing also. But I, I think this time around, hopefully, um, you know, we will have um, an option where we'll have, basically, you can only vote one time. Now, of course, people can enter different emails, create different usernames, but they're a little bit less likely to do that than just refreshing their page and voting multiple times. So that is uh, the details for the floral contest. We'll be talking about this most likely in probably every video till then. Uh, I think today is six weeks out so six weeks to create a pair and uh yeah i'm excited i love these contests these are so much fun um there was around 70 submissions in each of the horror and the christmas contest and uh it's so cool to see everybody turn out and uh just some really really fun submissions so 
Flora, I'm excited because just there's just going to be such a wide range of uh, stuff for people to see. So we had a couple super chats come in. Let's go ahead and check those out. First one from Pitbull Custom Shoes. Hey, Dylan, I've been customizing for about four weeks now. The other day, I sent you an email of my first custom. Hopefully, mine makes it much love and respect. Thank you, Pitbull. Uh, yeah, I, like I said, I, I really haven't had the chance to really sit down and um, search through every single pair. So I, I know some people have asked this one too. Um, what is the deadline for you know submitting pictures of your first pair? Ideally, I have these picked out in the next week. Maybe potentially over the weekend, I will have that all uh, skimmed through. But uh, yeah, hopefully over the next like three, four days, I'm going to say would sort of be the deadline. This way I can finalize them and reach out to all of those artists and have them send in their pairs. So thank you so much, Pitbull. Really appreciate that. Uh, and then we had another super chat from longtime supporter Ron Customs. Thank you so much, buddy. Huge supporter. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, Joseph says, uh, hey, Dylan, on the next episode, will you review first timers based on photos only or do we have to physically ship the sneakers to you? It's tough for me to ship from Europe. Yeah, absolutely. I totally understand. We've had a lot of people reach out uh, international and uh, yeah, the cost of shipping is not cheap. Um, there is um, sort of no way around that. But yeah, we, we do need the sneakers physically in hand for an episode of reviewing your customs. So I totally understand if the shipping cost are just sort of out of the uh, wheelhouse of, um, you know, of, of your budget and whatnot to get those sent over. So, uh, yes, let's see here. And then uh, another thing, I made a quick little graphic. Uh, let's see here for everybody to see. Do, do, do. Um, I made a small little graphic here for... Uh, if we do them today, we'll see. I, I kind of leave it up to the chat if you guys want to or not. Uh, some reviewing your Instagrams. I made a quick little graphic on some of the things that I'm thinking about when I'm reviewing somebody's Instagram, when I'm looking over one for the first time. And so I quickly just want to touch on these. I made this in a matter of five minutes, so there might be spelling errors. There, Who knows? But these are just like the initial things that quickly jump to my mind. So when I'm reviewing somebody's Instagram, First thing you take notice of is a name or logo. What will be your distinguishing company name logo? A few times, you know, I've reviewed the wrong Instagram because there's two people that have the name T.Customs or TM Customs or C, uh, CW Customs, whatever the case may be. How is your name going to be separate? You know, what's going to distinguish you from, uh, you know, how, how distinct is your name essentially? You know what I mean? And there's nothing wrong with having... Um, you don't, you don't have to right away jump into a business page and have your, just take your last name because that's what mine is. Take your last name, let's say it's Johnson Customs. You can just go by Daniel Johnson, whatever. You don't have to create a customizer business page. That's an option. I've considered moving my uh, Instagram and YouTube page to just Dylan DeJesus, but uh, I like it as, uh, I like it as DeJesus Custom Footwear. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, creating a logo, making things look professional so that people will take you serious. You know what I mean? Um, if you don't have a friend who's a graphic designer, you can use um, a, a uh, what's it called? A, a page like Fiverr and have somebody design you a logo for, depending on your budget, you can get a logo done for $5. You can get a better logo done for $50, $100, whatever the case may be. So something like that. Uh, number two, the bio. You know, what are you about? What makes you different? What separates you from every other customizer out there? Things like your location, uh, you know, what your, your company's tagline, whatever the case may be. Uh, of course, number three, the, the thing that you guys will hear me talk about every single time, the photography and the slogan. If you're trying to sell a premium product at a premium price, you need premium photography. You guys will hear me say it every single week. So... Um, yeah, photography. It, it's one of the biggest things. Um, I have been talking about it for months, but we are working on a PDF guide for custom sneaker photography. We have, it has been, it has been crazy busy guys. I have been so busy. Um, YouTube content, um, just, just our, our, our longtime clientele doing pairs for them. Um, still prepping and preparing the curriculum for the DCF experience. It's, it's been very unfortunate that, you know, we had to delay it, but it's also been, um, great that I've had more time to plan the curriculum. 
And yeah, we've just been crazy busy. Uh, of course, number four, looking at the artwork, creativity, originality, cleanliness, attention to detail. Of course, that's what matters. The artwork matters if you're going to be a sneaker customizer. Variety. What type, how much are you mixing up your content from video stuff, detail shots, money shots, as I like to call them, animation, and of course, you putting yourself into your Instagram. Some people choose not to. I didn't for years. If you scrolled far back on uh, the DeJesus Custom Fartware Instagram, um, if you scrolled more than three years back, you would never see my face. I just kept it about the, the artwork and, and the shoes and whatnot. But uh, things really changed, I think, when I started putting myself more out there. And that wasn't something that I was uh, super comfortable with. I'm still not comfortable on camera. It's still weird for me. I'm sitting here in a basement talking to a camera, although there's a lot of people hanging out with me, which is awesome. But um, it, it's still weird. It's still weird. So... Uh, but but just forcing it, you know what I mean? Putting yourself out there and putting yourself on camera is uh, something I definitely suggest. And then lastly, utilization of the platform. On Instagram, there are so many things that you could be using. Stories, highlights, Instagram TV. So these are just a few little things that uh, I am looking for anytime we are reviewing an Instagram page. So, you know, I'll pull that up again if we get around to that. So let's go ahead, hop in the chat. 142 people. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, let's see here. Da, da, da. Uh, Thompson34 says, hey, Dylan, great work and effort. You are a great inspiration. Can you do a two-minute Tuesday on touch-ups? How to paint edges clean would really appreciate. That is a great idea, Thompson. That is definitely a good idea because, yeah, Touching up edges and things like that, uh, that definitely matters. That definitely matters. Um, let me see. Uh, somebody had asked last week, um, you know, kind of how many, how many customs do I do in a week versus kind of how many I show and things like that. And so I actually thought that that was a, that was a great question. And uh, this week outside of YouTube content, um, we did two videos went up this week on YouTube. Uh, today's live stream I had to do, I did a little bit more for the course. I did a little bit more for the uh, custom sneaker photography guide. But I also went through five pairs that I did this week. I figured I'd quickly just show them off quickly. So first off, I did a pair of 49ers, Jordan 3s. This is a pair that I did probably, um, gosh, six, seven years ago. Um, for the most part, I really don't like to, at this point, recreate any old work. I, I like to keep everything one of one just that's what's most exciting for me. But somebody had reached out a longtime client and really said they needed a pair of these. So it was somebody who I had already had a previous uh, established relationship with. So I let, said, let's go ahead and uh, hook them up with one of these. So, I mean, years ago, I, I probably have done... 40 of these 49ers Jordan 3s. I've done more 49er shoes than I have done any other NFL team. 49ers fans go crazy for their shoes. Um, after that, I am doing a couple pairs, two pairs of Detroit Pistons Jordan 1s for a couple higher ups in the Pistons organization that somebody ordered as a gift. So they wanted them modeled after their gray jerseys this year. So we have the DP logo on the back. Um, the Pistons ball logo on the tongue. And so these are, these are pretty simple. Uh, just a uh, simple Jordan 1 with the uh, Pistons gray jersey colorway. Simple stuff, nothing crazy. I have a What the Metallic pair of Vans that I'm doing for an Angelus video that you guys will probably see in the next couple weeks or so. Uh, talking all about pearlescence and uh, metallics and things like that. So, quick little look at those. And then, I had another pair of cleats for a high school football player who unfortunately lost a friend recently. So, this is a memorial pair. So, we put um, his friend's old number on there. Black text here of his friend's um, name. Uh, you know, and then his uh, original birth date and the date he passed. So this is a, you know, a meaningful pair for him. And then in his town, he said he had, they have a slogan of uh, family first. So we put that big on the outside of the other shoe. Gold bottoms. I love these uh, gold plated cleats. That is uh, factory. That is not painted. But uh, yeah, so that that's five pairs. So that is some of the stuff that I was working on this week. 
and I just thought that would be uh, kind of cool to show. So let's see. Drop my phone. But um, let me see. Let me see here. Because 40, <laughs> Rupsy says, because 49ers fans can't afford customs. Yeah, it ain't cheap to live in uh, Cali, that's for sure. It is not cheap to live out there. Um, let's see here. Uh, John Coughlin says, when should you use Adhesion Promoter? I actually use it on every pair. Um, uh, right before you apply the paint, uh, you actually want the Adhesion Promoter to be wet once you are ready to apply your first uh, coat of paint. Not like dripping wet, but you want to go ahead, spray it outside because it's super strong smelling stuff, and then start applying your paint. I actually saw last night Wally Champ on, uh, he was on uh, Instagram Live with the Angelus page. He actually said he only uses it when he's painting plastics and things like that. I use it on every pair. It doesn't hurt. It's adhesion promoter. It just helps promote adhesion between the paint and the surface, the, the bond. You know, it's not going to hurt anything. So only helps. So yeah, I actually do use it on uh, every pair. Uh, Jordan Vincent says, how many pairs of shoes do you typically make in a week or month? I would say over the course of a year, I do about a pair a day. Now that is, um, I would say over the last few years, pretty heavily teetered towards um, the last four months of the year. Um, you know, your September, October, November, December, because of football season, that's why I'm doing multiple pairs a day usually. But just on average throughout the rest of the year, if I average about a pair a day, we're doing, uh, we're doing good stuff. So... Uh, let's see. Uh, Katie says, with the adhesion promoter, can you use it while painting with a brush? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, let's see here. Uh, Daniel Valdivia says, hey, Dylan, what company do you use for your custom shoe boxes? The one that I recommend people check out unless you are really ready for some High production numbers is going to be uh, packlane.com. That is where you can get some uh, custom boxes. The I think, I'm not sure what the minimum quantity is, but it's not that crazy. Um, but when you're going to start getting them at a much better price, you need to be ordering in the thousands. And so that's where we're at. We The last order I did was early last year, and it was a run of 1100 So... Uh, uh, the Rhyme Magic Mel, how you doing Mel, says, uh, do you do other items besides footwear, like purses, backpacks? I have done a couple purses, I have done a couple jean jackets, and I have done uh, a couple motorcycle helmets, and uh, those are some of my favorite projects. It feels nice probably just to switch it up because I do so much footwear, but I think down the line I would like to move into some large-scale large canvas work too. That's something that really interests me. Uh, moving away from acrylics and moving into some oil paintings. I think that's something that I would really like to uh, really like to do But yeah, it's 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 fun to to really switch it up and uh, I, I love working on jean jackets and jackets in general. Those are those are really fun I really like those and I and I want to do even more of those. Yeah, I want to do even a lot more other stuff I like doing purses uh, I had a lot of fun doing the motorcycle helmet. I, I say it all the time, but if you guys didn't, if you guys never have, make sure you go check out the motorcycle helmet video that we have on our page. It's probably one of our first 20 videos. It's a uh, Chicago Blackhawks themed motorcycle helmet, and it was a fun project. It was uh, just just a piece that I was super pleased with with how it turned out too. So that is a good one. Uh, John Becker says, Two Minute Tuesday on painting the tongue tab. We do have a video on uh, stencils on that tongue tab, John. I saw that was another one question. Uh, I think that video is called um, How to Do Vinyl Stencils on Fabric. That's roughly like the name of the video, and I'm working on a uh, Jordan 1 tongue tag. So for something like that, I just use uh, a specific vinyl FDC 3700 glitter vinyl because most regular vinyls aren't going to stick very well to a fabric like a Jordan 1 tongue tag. So yeah, I do uh, to do that logo, I did uh, a multi-layer stencil. So if we take a look at the uh, Pistons logo, um, let's see. Uh, I gotta get a little bit closer. Yep, Pistons logo. So you can see it's, it's blue, red, and white. I gotta get even closer. Yep, not focusing that well, but uh, that's kind of okay, I think. So the Pistons logo, we did, um, 
What I did here was I painted the entire tongue tag light gray. Then I laid down the size of the circle. I then painted that nearly all white. Then I covered up all the white, so the silhouette of the ball and the lettering for Detroit Pistons. Covered that up, and then I sprayed all my red. Um, and then what I did after that, peeled up all that vinyl and then did the blue outline. So that is how I did um, that multi-layer stencil. Another thing that I did, just brought to, uh, brought to my attention from my dad, was a uh, golf bag. That was a fun project. Shout out to uh, Papa De Jesus, always watching the streams. But yeah, I did a uh, golf bag last year uh, during the springtime, and that was with all of the uh, Chicago sports teams, the Chicago skyline, and things like that. That was fun too. That was a it was it was some nice genuine leather too. It was I was working on a really high quality bag, and um, I don't think this would be a surprise to anybody. But for the most part, a lot of the shoes we work on aren't made from very nice leather. So it was a it was kind of a treat to work on uh, some leather this nice. It painted really really nice. Uh, I th we thought about making a video of that, but um, but. We didn't think our, the audience would respond to it at all because nobody watched our motorcycle helmet video either. Uh, so, so we didn't do a video on it. But I, but I did post it on uh, on our Instagram and stuff. So, if you guys are interested in checking that out, uh, let's see here. A couple super chats came in from Characteristic Kicks. Does adhesion promoter prevent cracking on Air Jordan Three and Four midsoles? What would be the best ones to use? I use Rust-Oleum brand adhesion promoter. You could pick it up from. You can buy it on Walmart. Uh, I, I It might be available on Amazon, uh, but I know it's available at Walmart or on walmart.com and a couple other places. Just just Google uh, Rust-Oleum Adhesion Promoter. It's in a red can, and uh, the entire can's not red, but for the most part, you'll know what I mean. Clear top, red, red backing behind the Rust-Oleum logo and things like that. Does it prevent cracking on Air Jordan 3 and 4 midsoles? Um, there's not much that's going to prevent cracking on three and four midsoles. They just, I mean, even, they crack straight from the factory because um, I, I don't have a great reason for, for why that happens. But even, you got, you got to figure even Nike and Jordan brands factories can't figure out a way to make these midsoles never crack. Um, and the older they are, the more likely they are to crack. It's funny, at a sneaker convention, this is this is years ago, but I bought a pair of the cool gray Jordan 3s. I love that colorway. I think it released in 2007. I picked them up in probably, this is probably 2013, so they were about six years old. It was a dead stock pair. I paid a pretty penny for them, and I wore them, and right away, they cracked so bad. It looked like I had... I had been wearing them since 2007, and it was a dead stock new pair six years later, and they cracked so bad my first wear. Oh, man. But, yeah, what can you do, um, things you can do to to try to help? Uh, will Adhesion Promoter help? It won't hurt it. It won't hurt it. So, yeah, that's why I use Adhesion Promoter on every single pair, because it's not going to hurt in the long run. So, yes, great question, though. But, yeah, threes and fours midsoles. They stink. Um, I actually painted them on this pair of Jordan 3s. No major secret. I strip down the midsole, use adhesion promoter. Um, I don't use too hard. Uh, th there is no secrets to, to how I paint this midsole. Um, it is something that I do discuss with the client that like, you know, hey, I don't necessarily love painting midsoles, but this was part of the original design and I, and I sort of let them know that. But uh, yeah, strip down the midsole entirely. Um, base coat it, well, adhesion promoter first, base coat it, and then get to that 49ers sort of gold tannish color. Um, you know, no secrets, no too hard, no too soft, no weird additives or anything like that. Um, I actually do on the midsole and back tab, I do use some of Raleigh Restoration's, uh, scratch sealer. Um, but I don't, I don't treat that, uh, the, on the tab, the plastic here, you'd want to use too hard, which I did. But, um, you know, just be realistic about uh, things like that. Um, I think that these are a little bit more of a uh, display type piece for, for the person who bought them than like everyday wear. So, yes, always try to just be aware of those types of things that those are areas that are a lot less likely for the paint to last.
a back tab, a midsole, than you know the rest of your upper if you uh, prep and paint correctly. Uh, let's see here. Another super chat from Marl Dane Lunas. Thank you, buddy. I just got my spray booth in. Turns out the window next to my desk is cocked shut. Got to run 20 feet of tube now, so the customs this time were awesome. Looks like they took a while to get to you. Oh, man. That is funny. You got to run 20 feet. Man, oh, man. Woo. Uh, that's funny. I actually uh, had to order a new one of the spray boots. Uh, it's actually blocked by the shoes. Um, that's not a new one, but I did get a new one because I wanted to get the ones with the lights. And so it's actually black also, and I thought that uh, was a whole lot more sleek. Also, I actually do plan, I think we're going to be doing a review, like an unboxing of that uh, airbrush spray booth. But also another great thing is um, uh, that on that spray booth, the tube in the hosing is in the back. So it makes the setup a whole lot larger, whereas the one that I bought, now it's on the top. So if you're working in a smaller, more confined space, something like that is tough because there's pretend this is the spray booth and you're spraying into here. Well, there's a hose that sticks out the back of here like my arm. So now you need to have all this clearance, whereas now the one I bought has the hose on top. So now you can put the, the backside of your uh, booth uh, you know, sort of closer to your wall. So uh, just a little bit better of a design for uh, a lot of spaces, typically. Uh, let's see. Ba, ba, ba. Uh, let's see. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Let's see here. Uh, Katie says, what do you use to tape the metal eyelets on shoes? That's a good question. So what I actually do, um, potentially if you're talking, these aren't metal, these are plastic ones, but sometimes like eyelets on a pair of Vans or something like that, I'll actually cut out a bunch of vinyl circles to uh, go on to something like this. Let me know what shoes specifically you might be talking about, Katie, and we can um, we can potentially, I can tell you what I might do. But yeah, depending on the shoe, depending on the eyelets you're talking about, I might tape them off a different way. But for something like these, these perfectly circular eyelets, I like to uh, cut out um, some circles out of vinyl. And uh, they stick, vinyl is gonna stick well to that, so. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, another super chat from Johnny. When can we see your amazing setup? We have been meaning to do a, um, a, uh, a follow-up to our studio tour video for quite a while. We have been meaning to do that. That is definitely a video we have on the list of one for the near future. Uh, let's see. Uh, we got uh, trying to answer some uh, trying to get to a lot of the good questions here. Uh, oh wait, Rain in 08 says, uh, "What's good, chat? Question: When you cut a swoosh off, is there anything I can use to fill the stitch hole?" So Angelus is actually working on a product. They sent some to me. I actually haven't used it because I haven't cut off a swoosh to test it. But uh, for something like this that Kong Customs did, I'm not sure if he's in here. Uh, Liquid Kicks actually makes a leather filler product, which you can order right now. Angelus, I think, is still in development on theirs, finalizing some stuff. But this this one actually looks great here on this pair from uh, Kong Customs. Um, you can almost hardly see the holes. I don't I don't think he used any leather filler or anything like that. But his job on removing the swish and then plucking all of that individual stitching uh, looks absolutely phenomenal. So. Uh, let's see here. Uh, da, da, uh, Corey Buchanan says, "Do you use duller on every coat or just the last couple?" This is a. This is a. This is a. I think I'm not going to say it's a highly debated question, but it's a question that I think a lot of people have different takes on. I think there's been some videos out there where people um, have said things about duller that. Um, have scared people away from it, that it that it hurts your paint or something like that. We actually just released a video 
on um, on uh, Angelus's page that you guys can uh, check out after this, a video that we released uh, that we did for them on using Duller. So they just posted a new video today all about Duller. And uh, it's, it's one of my favorite products from them. And uh, yeah, I think there's some videos out there where people have heard, you know, Duller is bad for your pain. It, 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 yes, too much Duller can make your paint brittle. And uh, of course, but you use it in very small increments. So um, you can just do it in your final two coats if you want, if you're you know potentially scared of it, or you can uh, use it the entire time. I have a lot of paints. All of my airbrush ready paints have a little bit of duller already mixed in. So totally up to you, but uh, duller is not going to hurt you if you do choose to use it the whole time. So uh, let's see. Uh, Horn Customs Design says, uh, Dylan, can you use Liquid Kicks Finisher straight into an airbrush as well as GAC 900? You can use the Liquid Kicks Finisher right through your airbrush. It applies uh, phenomenally um, as well as GAC 900. GAC 900 is an additive, so you would never have a reason to spray that just by itself through your airbrush. However, if you're asking if you can mix Liquid Kicks Finisher with GAC 900, um, you know, if you're applying finisher to a fabric shoe or something like that, um, you would not need to use, uh, GAC 900 in the finisher if you were trying to apply finisher to a pair of fabric shoes. Um, but that, yeah, that's a, that's an interesting question. That's an interesting question. Um, however, if I'm doing a fabric shoe or something like that, I actually like to use a Krylon matte finish spray rather than a, uh, liquid finisher. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Nathan says, how do you get sponsored by Angelus? Um, the, the simplest black and white answer is to do something different than all of their other sponsored artists and have a following. That's what makes the most sense for them to want to sponsor you. That, uh, you know, sponsorship is going to be a two-way street. So, you know, they want to have access to your following and they want you to be somebody who represents uh, their company in a good way and is doing good stuff with uh, their product. So those are some, uh, some things that I would say, those are the two most important things. Have a following and do something different than everybody else. Yep. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. Uh, I've got a message from Papa De Jesus. He says, uh, my cousin Ryan is with them watching. I got to give my cousin Ryan a shout out. Remind them how many pairs you've done for him since uh, he's been born. So my cousin Ryan is, I believe, eight now. And uh, I've painted a pair for him every year for his birthday. Uh, so he's got a pretty cool collection that hopefully one day uh, it'll be really cool to get some content and, and see all of them together. I've made a pair for him every year for his birthday uh, with whatever his favorite cartoon show or, or movie is at the time. We've done Star Wars, Power Rangers, uh, when he was younger, Bubble Guppies, Paw Patrol. So, uh, you know, Dexter's going to have the same. Dexter's going to have an awesome uh, custom shoot collection too. So it'll be cool to see as the uh, pairs start to pile up. Uh, so let's see. Um, uh, well, Dane had a question. Let me see. Let me see. I don't have every single it's a cross stitching. Um, okay. So some questions, uh, I see Repsy and Marl Dane talking about, uh, stitching on Air Force Ones, the cross stitching on the back half. Yeah. The cross stitching should be on the back half of your, um, Air Force, but not on those not on the, uh, you know, front portion that's only on that medial panel. Uh, let's see. Nick Kessler says, I'm still struggling with hand painting the mesh sock liner using GAC 900. Should I be generously ap applying or uh, just a few light coats? It seems to look blotchy when heat set. Nick, if possible at all, I highly, highly recommend... Um, airbrushing sock liners always. It's going to keep them even softer because you're applying less paint. However, sometimes an airbrush isn't always an option. 
and I have done hand painted sock liners also, but um, yeah, it's just harder to get an an even an even look when you're hand painting them also. But yeah, one to one ratio of your uh, GSC 900 or two or your two soft with your Angelus, and then heat set in between every coats. If you're hand painting, I would say it's probably going to take about three coats though. Uh, uh, Coco's kick says, "Hey Dylan, I mixed in a little more duller than you should because I wanted a chalky look. Will the shoe hold up?" No, so we actually have an interesting um, experiment. Let me actually, uh, you guys will see it in uh, Angelus's video, but I'll somewhat show you on here. If I pull that up, I'll, I'll sort of show you guys on the iPad. This is pretty interesting that um, will sort of show what can happen to your paint uh, if you add too much duller and it becomes a little too brittle. Check this out. Let's make it full screen. So there won't be any audio, but that's no duller at all. See how it's still flexible? Whereas when there's way too much duller, it's incredibly brittle and just sort of cracks. And that's like, we're talking like 50% duller there in that portion of the video. So it's not like that's 5% duller and it makes the paint super brittle and it's no longer usable or something like that. So go ahead and check out that video a little bit later. But um, yeah, um, if you apply too much duller, uh, your paint's going to be brittle and the shoe will no longer uh, have that flexibility. So unfortunately, if that were the case for me, I would say um, you would have to remove some of that paint and, and sort of start over. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Uh, made by Pinda says, Hey Dylan, any tips on making sales? I put myself on Instagram, my own website and the custom movement, but it's not working just yet. Any tips? Uh, made by Pinda. Let me go ahead and, uh, I'd love to check out some of your work, and uh, that might be a, a way that I could really help. Let me know if your Instagram is made by Pinda. I'll check it out, and uh, we'll see. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to give you some tips. But without knowing um, about your work, um, it would be hard for me to say. So let me know what your Instagram is. We will check that out. Um, ba -ba -ba. But yeah, let, let's check that out, and we'll see what we have to say. Uh, we have a, uh, made by Pinda says, I have one design, not going to lie. There you go. There's your answer. You know what I mean? So, uh, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, one thing that I'll always say there, there is, um, you got to build out a portfolio on Instagram. You gotta, you gotta do a lot of designs and a lot of pairs for, for, I think you should work not, you don't necessarily have to because I didn't. But a great idea when you're trying to grow, when you want to build this, is do work for free um, for friends and family so that you can build out your portfolio. If you only have one pair on your Instagram, at this point, you don't even look like a legit person or business, really. People have no reason to trust you when you only have one post up on your page. You know what I mean? So you need to build out that portfolio so you can start to look like, oh, what's going on here is legit. You know what I mean? So patience, building out... Um, building out that portfolio and uh, it doesn't happen overnight so there you go there you go see see I'm glad that we were able to uh, it's a digital mock-up also yeah so people don't even know what they're getting because they haven't seen the artwork yet you know what I mean so um, yep I'm see I'm glad that we were able to uh, get to the root of that one uh, let's see here I saw a cool question um, uh, Michael Madsen says, uh, Hey Dylan, who is the highest profile athlete you have done a custom cleat for? So some pro bowlers that we've done cleats for some, some big names in the NFL. Uh, I've never done anything for OBJ, but before he was one of Nike's signature athletes for about two years, I did a cleat every week for Devonte Adams on the Packers, uh, pro bowl wide receiver. Let's see. Um, some other, I'm just trying to think of household names that sort of everybody would know. Um, of course, Eric Ebron, Quan Alexander. Um, who would else would be some of the 
some of the big time names that we've done for. I'm trying to think of, of names that everybody would know. Uh, da, da, da. Who would some of the big ones be for the My Cause, My Cleats? Um, there's just, there's been so many. There's been so many. I'd, ha I'd have to, I'd have to think about it. I'd have to think and remember um, all of the ones because there has been, there has been so many over the years. It's been awesome. But uh, for the most part, I'm, tr I'm trying to think. A lot of people, you know, typically know NFL people from, from QBs and whatnot. And uh, there hasn't been that many QBs that I've done. So... Yeah, with some of the other some of the other huge names, uh, Eric Ebron, of course. If I didn't already say him, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, brain's frozen right now. They're not all coming to me. Stephon Gilmore, yeah, his uh, Pro Bowl cleats this year. Yep, yep. There you go. Thank you, thank you, Mario. Appreciate that. Uh, he was the uh, defensive player of the year. So, yeah, uh, uh, brain's frozen right now on uh, the rest of them. Um, one of the first pairs, <laughs> the, thankfully, thankfully my dad coming in hot, uh, Papa de Jesus, uh, one of the first pairs before custom cleats really boomed in the NFL was Mark Sanchez when he was with the Eagles. It was a Monday night football game and it was for a uh, veterans day. We did a camo pair and it was the digi camo to match, um, the, the sideline apparel, the beanies and whatnot. And this is like 2014. So this was before custom cleats really started booming in the NFL. So that was, uh, Super, super proud moment to uh, to have those on uh, Monday Night Football. And Mark Sanchez even played well. They even got the W. So uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, Scorpio React says, I don't know how to draw. Can I still custom my shoes? Uh, the, the, the funny way that I have been um, uh, answering that question lately is... Um, can you be an athlete? Can you can you be non-athletic and still play sports? Absolutely, but it only helps if you are athletic, and that's why typically athletes can hop into multiple sports and seemingly right away be pretty decent at them. Just like you can, if you're artistically um, talented and, and you can draw good or paint good, and you hop into customizing shoes, you're going to be pretty decent right off the bat. So. Uh, Michael Matt says, says uh, thanks again for hooking me up with uh, stencils a few weeks back. My son and I love watching your channel and learning about customization. Thanks for all you do to help us. Thank you, Michael. Greatly appreciate that. Um, that is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always hyped to hear that uh, customizing sneakers is uh, a way for, for parents and children to bond. That's, that's super cool to uh, see and hear that uh, we have families watching us sometimes. Uh, let's see. Uh, Repsy says, uh, uh, hey Dylan, what additive do you use to keep your paint more fluid while hand painting portraits? So in my very minor, um, portrait painting, um, experiences, what I used to help a little bit last time was, uh, some retardar from Golden Brand. Uh, yes. Some fluid retarder. This is, oh, it's actually from Liquitex, not Golden Brand. So if I get that in focus, yeah. So that, that basically keeps your paint a little bit more wet, keeps it a uh, little bit um, just more fluid and, and working. And so you're able to blend better when you're doing a portrait and uh, things like that. Um, let's see. Um, ba, ba, ba. Uh, OP Parza says, where do you buy Mylar at? Mylar, excuse me. You can buy Mylar from, uh, sometimes it's on Amazon. A lot of places are out of stock, but, uh, the place that, um, that I probably recommend is stencilease, E-A-S-E dot -E com. Uh, Marco says, Marco L says, uh, I just started myself and I'm curious as to the longevity of the paint on shoes once coated with finisher Totally really depends on, uh, I see there's a follow-up here about your prep, you know, your paint application. It says, I completely stripped with acetone. I don't sand them. So to me, sanding is the most important step. Sanding is what makes or breaks um, durability and wearability, in my opinion. But um, it totally depends on um, the shoe that you did 
and uh, you know how you applied the paint and um, but they should they should hold up hold up well if you if you prep them correctly if you you know allow proper dry time and things like that you know you don't uh, put the paint on too thick and uh, some areas are certainly a little bit more prone to paint cracking such as toe boxes on uh, on Air Forces and Jordan ones and things like that I'm still wearing we're wearing the uh, I got them on the uh, chunky dunky Jordan ones still doing uh you know some wear testing and things like that for you guys um you know i, I always like to trigger everybody but make the front of it talk and uh yeah they're they're still holding up no cracking in uh the creases that's not going to focus it never does for me and it's so gets a little blown out from the light um but yeah you won't see uh other people showing you that you know what I mean? So we definitely got to do some videos on this. We have to do videos on uh, the paint cracking and stuff. What's up, Kong? We got your pair hanging out with us here today. Great job on these, buddy. Um, just phenomenal work, man. You you are super talented. And uh, yeah, this was, uh, this was an awesome pair. It was so funny to hear that um, the way that I sort of envisioned your game plan for these was, you know, what you actually did of doing blue, orange, blue, orange, on the left and then doing orange blue orange blue on the uh on the right it's it's always it's that's one of my favorite things about reviewing your customs is, is putting yourself in the art other artist's shoes and sort of trying to uh reverse engineer stuff so super cool um let's see uh da, da, da. Uh, uh, so when you're sanding, as far as the stitching goes, I, I, I do regret now the one video, uh, it's a great video. It's, it's a video I'm really proud of our custom air force one video. That's the title of the video where we paint the salmon toe air force ones. It's also a video that did really well for us. I think it probably has north of 250,000 views or something like that. Because that was a pair that I did in one day, the way that we filmed everything, I didn't go back to clean up the stitching as much as I would have liked to. The way that I really like to do it is run a lighter over um, the stitching. That cleans up any of the fraying. However, I did not think it was appropriate for, um, since we have a younger audience, to show using a lighter near your shoes because that could also go horribly bad also but sometimes just running a lighter of it will really clean up that fraying and then a tip that came from Repsy that I do use all the time now is a nose hair trimmer and you run that right over the stitching and it cleans it up so the reason that I mentioned that on the salmon tail air force ones is that pair um I, I wish I would have uh, cleaned up the stitching a little bit more because I think a lot of people uh might be afraid to sand because of hey it's gonna mess up my stitching you know what I mean um and of course, being an artist, a perfectionist, you want everything to be to be great and whatnot. So of course, you don't want freight stitching. Totally get it. But you know, to me, that's something that will uh, um, the proof is in the pudding. You know what I mean? That hopefully that's something that will um, really help make the shoes a uh, whole lot more wearable. And um, you know, I don't think it, until somebody else shows that they have a different prep method that works better um, and you know they can make an Air Force One or a Jordan One paintable on the toe box and no paint cracking then um, you know I, I this is the method that works you know what I mean so yes uh, let me see couple let, let me get through some ones quickly let's go somewhat a little rapid here Andre says got any recommendations for good cheap compressor for airbrushing if you go, uh, if you have a Harbor Freight near you or on their website, they have an airbrush compressor for $69. They last for years. So pick that one up. Uh, Jared says, how did you paint the elephant print on that pair of threes? So elephant print, you actually don't need to do any prep, uh, depending on the Jordan 3, because there is different materials for the elephant prints. But uh, the most, the, the colorway of Jordan 3s that I've customized the most is going to be the Fire Red 3s from 2013. And uh, you actually don't need to do any, any prep on those, no additives for your paint, and it holds up uh, perfectly. Um, but, so yeah, I just laid down the, the gold tan color first, and then I went in and, and hand-painted all of the elephant paint and the red just with a, uh, a tiny little uh, toothpick. 
Uh, Coco's Cake says, I'm doing a custom where I need to use a stencil of someone but need to paint the background. Should I cut out a stencil so where the stencil is going is white or can I just paint over the background? Personally, I usually always just paint the entire background first because sometimes my design might might change a little bit or, or something like that, whatever the case may be. I might view how I want to place the stencil a little bit different depending on what happens with the background, but you can absolutely do it either way. Sometimes if you know, for example, um, let's just say for example sake, you knew you were doing a pair like this, and let's say you were airbrushing stuff or, or whatever, you knew you were gonna do Bart. Could you lay down a silhouette of Bart first when the shoe's still white, then do everything else, and then come back and do Bart? Sure, but the way that I always do it is I just do the entire background first, and then I'll go in and do uh, the silhouette for Bart afterwards. But you can absolutely do it uh, either way. That one is sort of just a uh, preference thing. Uh, let's see here. Um, I apply duller directly to, uh, seven dozier says I applied duller directly to my custom, which left a white residue. Any way I can get the color back. I would ask to tone that off. Um, yep. Uh, we talk about that in the video that we did with Angelus today. Duller is an additive, not a top coat. Um, let's see. There was another question I saw, ba, ba, ba. Uh, Bramos TKD says, Hey Dylan, I was supposed to customize a pair of custom cleats for an NFL player. He said he would hit me back when he got the cleats, but he never did. And it's been about two to three weeks. Any advice? Okay. So here is, uh, now I'll go into a, um, uh, <laughs> before I hop into it, battle rap opinion says salute Dylan, the duller King. That is, uh, that is gold. I love that. Um, but here's what I'll say about working with athletes and celebrities, and if that's your goal. What I've learned over all the years of working with them, you need to make things as incredibly easy and simple and, as, and done in as few messages as humanly possible with them. They are so used to everything just being, once they've reached a certain level, sort of just handed to them. So when he says he'll hit you up when he gets the cleats, that can somewhat be the holdup. You need to sort of offer the option, hey, you want me to pick up the cleats for you? I do that all the time. And then just charge them the cost of the cleat too. They, they're, they're, the cost of the cleat doesn't matter to them. You know what I mean? They probably get them for free from, from their, uh, they might be sponsored or whatnot or from their equipment manager. Sometimes they don't have to pay for them. Sometimes they do. It's, it's different. Different players have different deals and whatnot, but you need to streamline the process when working with celebrities and athletes as much as possible. So, you know, like I said, if that means, um, uh, supplying the, the stuff for them or, yeah, that, that could potentially be the holdup. Um, but you said it's been a uh, two to three weeks. Um, I, I would probably hit him up again and just say, hey, uh, did you by chance, say, did you by chance get the cleats? And maybe he didn't because everything's still a little crazy right now. Maybe he wasn't able to get them. Maybe he forgot. That's certainly potential uh, an option also. But you could just say, hey, if you didn't get them, do you want me to just pick up the cleats for you and just find out what cleat model he wears? You know what I mean? So uh, that's a great question, but that's, that is uh, what I would say about it. Uh, Andre says, hi, I've got a question for the upcoming competition. How do you pick the final four customs to review? Well, it is totally subjective, and essentially it is uh, my four favorite out of all of the entries. Um, that is uh, the cool part about... Uh, and, and the hard part about hosting a contest is that uh, I get to pick the uh, final four and then the public gets to vote on the winner. So, um, yeah, that came down to that. That idea came from uh, the show Ink Master that we'll always reference. And, um, yeah, so it's subjective, but uh, the, the, the uh, top four out of the many, many submissions we expect, we narrow it down and review them, and then uh, you guys vote on the winner. Uh, let's see. There was a good video. Let me look up the title. Um, can you enter the competition as a beginner? Absolutely, Paulina. Uh, there's a, there's a page on YouTube that I like. Uh, I believe the page is called Ink Magazine. It might just be Inked Mag. Let me see what the exact name is. But I'll always say there's a lot of comparisons between, um, 
custom sneakers and the tattoo industry. So the page is just called Inked, but they're the ones who uh, run Inked Magazine. And if you win the show competition Ink Master, you get featured in uh, Inked Magazine. So the video today was called How Tattooers Found Their Style. And I thought that's really cool because a lot of people are sort of always wondering how to find their style as a sneaker customizer. And so, yeah, that's a good video for anybody to check out. And there were some uh, interesting things that they all said in there that uh, one of my favorite ones, uh, I believe it was Nico Hurtado, world-class tattooer, said, my style st sort of found me. And it just, uh, um, it ended up being what I was sort of doing at the time and then people started enjoying that so I started sort of started to do it more and I think that's that is um that is sort of how it goes if we just take a look at, at Kong Customs for example here you know he does these these animal print textures well guess what people are going to be coming to him to ask for something like that not to say they won't but he's going to get more questions correct me if I'm wrong Kong if you're still here but um he's going to get more inquiries for pairs like this than doing LV Air Forces or something like that. So sort of what you put out into the world is what you can expect to get requested by because people sort of only know what they see. A lot of people are very, very, um, like I said, they sort of only know what they see. So what you're putting out, if your Instagram's filled with a ton of... Um, animal texture stuff, you're going to get requests for that. You know what I mean? You're not going to get as many requests for, um, let's just say, Kong's probably not getting as many requests for, I don't know, uh, Serato's Galaxy work or something like that. You know what I mean? But when somebody reaches out to Serato, they probably want some of that Galaxy work or, or something like that. So yeah, uh, Kong says, yeah, for sure. You want to create what you want to create. Yeah. So like if you want to do a certain style, if you want to find your style, just experiment with a lot of things and put that out into the world and then that's what you're going to get uh requested to do so yeah absolutely uh, ba, ba, ba. uh cole padilla says question i just got an airbrush and i was going to use it but my parents said no because they thought overspray all over the walls or something i got a booth for overspray are they right uh if you use one of the airbrush boots you are good to go but if you do not have one um, you will need one because there will be overspray that will go all over the place. Um, so yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Um, yes, yeah, so I think it's time. Let's go ahead and, uh, let's take a look at some Instagrams. Uh, let me know who is down, uh, if any of my mods are willing to check out some and do a little bit of, uh, pre-investigating for me and let me know ones that would be good to look at uh let me know let me know let's see uh op parza says how does the competition work so all you need to do to enter into the contest is post a picture of your floral theme shoes to instagram and use the hashtag dcf floral contest so let's pull up that one more time before we check out some instagrams Switch over here, not that one, there we go. Floral theme contest, open to all, use hashtag DCF floral contest to enter. Make sure you're following DeJesus Custom Footwear and Angelus Direct. Deadline of Friday, July 31st, the final four will be posted to YouTube August 19th, and then the winner will be voted on by the public. Uh, let's see. Uh, UV says, is there any alternative for duller? Not that I know of. Not that I know of. Uh, oh, wait, Rainin says, uh, can you hand, hand Angelus finishers and can you mix duller into matte finisher for a super matte look? Thanks again for the help chat. Um, uh, can you hand paint? I think that might be what you're asking. Or can you do it by hand? Yes, you can do the Angelus finishers by hand. And yes, you should mix a little bit of Duller into them because matte finisher is not very matte. So probably about 10% uh, Duller uh, into your matte finisher. Uh, does the model of the shoe matter for the contest? Nope, it could be a sneaker, a heel, a slide, anything. Anything. 
Uh, Mario says, is there international uh, restriction for the contest? I am in Mexico. There is not, but, you know, if you were picked as one of the final four, you would just have to uh, send them in. We had a... a um, uh, one of the final four for the Christmas contest came from Mexico. So, yep. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kong gave me a good one. Kong says, C-Y-N-S Customs. Uh, and the name is Cynthia, so Sins... I hope I'm saying it correctly. Is it? I'm not sure if it's Sins Customs, but let's go ahead and uh, we will check that out. I believe it is Sins Customs. C Y N S Customs. Let's see here. Okay, so ba, 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 we got that, and then just super quickly, you know, just, just some of the things, showed this in the weaving of the stream, some of the things we're looking for when it comes to an Instagram. Name, logo, bio, photography, artwork, variety in terms of content and utilizing all of the capabilities of the platform. So just some of the things that we are looking for. So let's go ahead and check this out. So here's Sins Customs. Uh, DM me, $40, $40 plus, one to two week shoe full restoration is available too, along with a link to the, um, the Instagram. It looks like you stole uh, my highlight covers that's pretty funny also um let's see here so taking a look at some of the stuff we have these joker converse those are dope that's cool we got some bape air forces some simpson supreme air forces uh let's see Uh, Minecraft Jordan 1s, little uh, Rainbow Galaxy Air Forces. Okay, so, oh, and then uh, some earlier work, some sketchbook stuff, that's cool. All right, so, yeah, just uh, thinking about some of the things that I mentioned. So, you know, name, get, got your business name, got your logo, cool. The bio, DM me, $40 plus, you know, so people sort of know. Um, the bio, I think it could be a little, little cleaner, but we, I don't, we don't need to spend too much time on the bio. Um, the artwork, solid, you know what I mean? Solid stuff, uh, switching it up, um, you know, find, try to find, uh, your style. What are you, what are you going to do? What are you going to sort of, uh, become known for? It's cool that you have a lot of different stuff, some Chucky customized vans. Uh, the photography, of course, uh, the photography, the photography, the photography, and the photography. Um, yeah, I just think that the photography could be a little bit cleaner. Uh, edit the photos. That will make them look certainly a little more pleasing. You know, you're framing your, your composition. It uh, could uh, just look um, a little bit cleaner. It, it's certainly off to a decent start. Some of your poses and whatnot, like this is a decent pose. But, you know, just like, a, like a, a super tiny, minute little thing, like this, you know, little shadow up here in the corner, just a little unnecessary. So you would want to move away from that so that shadow's not there. You're shooting in really direct sunlight. So we have the shadows cast from the shoes. So, you know, if you're just shooting um, and you don't have a DSLR to where you can really control the lighting and things like that, um, you would want... Um, to, to shoot in the shade. Shooting in the shade, if you're using an iPhone or a smartphone, which this probably is, definitely something I recommend. So yeah, cool stuff. Uh, test out some video content, I would do that. Make sure you're active on the stories. You always wanna have a nice active page, but uh, cool stuff, yeah, good stuff. I like these, you know, the Galaxy Air Forces look clean. Some nice blends of the colors. Some decent blends here in the Galaxy on this uh, Rick and Morty pair. So cool stuff. 
cool stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, MG242 with a great question. Do you think all photos should be taken in the same background to make the page look cleaner? That is certainly an option. That is, however, um, that is not an easy thing to do. I'm trying to think if there's any artist that I can think of that has that, where every photo is in the same background. I can't think of anybody who's done that, but that is, it certainly would look clean. And I certainly sometimes like to compare your Instagram page to a portfolio or your online museum. So that could be cool if, uh, are done, if that is done correctly. Um, yeah, that, that, that's certainly an option though. Certainly an option. And it would look clean if you pulled that off. So yeah, uh, Fran Francois. I don't. I don't believe it's pronounced Francis because there's an O there. So I'm gonna say Francois. How do you paint the sock liner so they don't stain your socks? So when I'm wearing these shoes, I actually bought white socks specifically for the Marco video. I had to get white high socks because I haven't worn white socks in years. So I bought some just for the video we did of Marco. And anytime I've been wearing these, I've actually worn white socks so I could see if any of the color would strain off. And all right, now things are just getting weird in today's video. I'm holding up to show off my white socks, but you can see there's no um, colors from in the sock liner has every color imaginable on the inside. So check this out. This is a shoe. We painted the entire thing live other than the sock liner and we show off exactly how um, during uh, the sock liner video, which was posted last week. So check that out. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Costa, how you doing, buddy? I know you said, I think I'm pronouncing it wrong. I think it might just be Costa, and, I, and I'm going a little hard on the O. Uh, remind me, remind me if I am. But he says, my background usually is in the same place. I find it gets repetitive. That is absolutely uh, something that could happen, and that's why I wasn't necessarily gung-ho about the idea of always doing the same background. Also, because sometimes you want to switch it up. You might want to do, um, you know, certain themes might fit better with a different background and whatnot. So, um, yeah, that, that is also why, uh, that is why I like to uh, switch it up. Cause, Costa, Costa, okay. Gotcha, buddy. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I hear you. But I mean, certain backgrounds work great for a lot of themes, brick, concrete, you know what I mean? But sometimes one might look a little bit better than the other. Yeah, I mean, um, you will, you, if you take a look at, at ours, there's, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of similar stuff. Uh, you know, like I said, concrete, brick, grass, turf, Sometimes we'll just do solid colors. And uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. Uh, Marl Dane says H Crep Custom is worth looking at. Doing crazy stuff with switches, with the uh, swishes. So let's see here. Let's take a look at that, Marl Dane. Uh, H Crep Custom. I wonder if. Uh, I think the H. Might have been an error. Let's see. Um, Maldane, let me know. Is it just crep custom underscore? Let's try that one. Whoops. Whoops. Crep custom. I wonder if it's this first one. You said crazy stuff with the swish. Okay, don't think it's that one. It's the underscore. Uh, let me see how you originally wrote it. Uh, where's your last message? Crep. Is the H supposed to be there? Is there an H? H, crep. H, crep, yeah. The H is supposed to be there. It's not popping up for me. H crep custom underscore. I have the underscore. 
No results found. Am I crazy? Is the H supposed to be there? Yeah, I don't know why. Not popping up for me. H crep custom underscores. Is there maybe two underscores? Nope. Weird. H creps custom. Holding up the chat, Marlene. Just kidding, buddy. Uh, let's see. There we go. There we go. So they are in London. Cool. Let's see. So do some recon work too. Oh, okay. Remove the swishes and then they do, uh, okay. Do some recon work. Nice. A little bit of painting in there too, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see some chunky donkeys. That's dope. Man, crazy. Crazy to see uh, shoes really come apart. Yeah, they're, they're switching it up. That's for sure. This is cool. Oh, check these out. That's crazy. That's crazy. What do we have here? Wow, the swish is hidden behind some type of liquid. Is that shoe finished somewhere? I want to see those. Is it this one? I want to see those with the with the swish hidden behind some type of liquid. That's nuts. Yeah, what do we have here? There, there's some crazy stuff here. This is a cool page. These are pretty crazy. Lego? Is that... They took real Lego? They cut real Legos? They cut real Legos for that swish. That is awesome. That is awesome. Did they put a Dragon Ball on one? What the heck? I wonder how that looks from the side. Like how... That's crazy. Yeah, cool stuff. Okay, so you said most recent post. Dang. I want to see these on the shoes with the swooshes. That's crazy. Yeah, so here we... I don't, I don't even know what I'm looking at, but it's awesome. Using some crazy earth textures. I'm just trying to see here on the, on the story highlights. They're kind of showing what they're using. That is cool stuff. That's cool stuff. That was cool. That was cool stuff. Uh, let's see here. Um, ba, ba, ba. So, we are going to do our buddy, and I gotta give him a huge shout out, uh, CW Customs. Uh, he went ahead, went back through the entire 10 hour live stream video and sent me over timestamps for where everything is. I've been wanting to add those to the description so that when people are sort of coming to the video for the first time, I don't expect just not, you know, not everybody who visits it is going to sit there and actually uh, watch the entire video, of course. So, you know, if they have uh, the uh, little timestamps, you know, they can sort of know where they need to go. So thank you for that, CW. I appreciate you, buddy. Um, now, I know we looked at his Instagram many months back. Um, Probably one of the first ones we did. So let's take a look at it now. Uh, Cruz Whitaker, Road to 1K, based in Beaverton, Oregon. 14-year-old sneaker customizer. New content at least once a week. Buy my shoes or DM for an order. This is literally an A++++10 bio. That is phenomenal. Um... When I was when I was creating uh, the little graphic for for things that I'm looking for, I wanted to put short and sweet for the bio, but I don't think it necessarily has to be short and sweet. This one isn't that short, but it's perfect. And uh, this is probably almost you probably used probably almost the full amount of characters that you can for a bio because there's a limit. But you have a hashtag that you're kind of branding, you're putting behind, you're you're trying to get to one k. That's awesome. Everybody, go ahead who's watching, make sure you give CW Customs a follow after this. Um, I would consider a logo, 
I, I'd consider it. You know what I mean? Um, you just have a picture of uh, one of your shoes, the Air Maxes. Just an option. That's not wrong. Just an option. Um, your location, awesome. You're the first person for me to see have your content schedule. New content at least once a week. I love that. That is that is awesome because uh, that's something that you'll see a lot of people have on their headers on their YouTube page. Hey, I post every Wednesday, Friday, and Monday. And people like that. People like schedules. You know what I mean? So to say that you're dropping something new every week, awesome. 14 years old. I mean, come on. When I was 14, I was eating dirt or something. So for you to be running a business, props to you, man. Um, buy my shoes with the or DM for an order. I mean, this is, like I said, this is an A-plus bio. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I don't. I typically don't say here, go copy somebody's stuff, but if you're wondering how to do a bio, this is the template. This is A+. Plus. Uh, so uh, I've just spent five minutes probably talking about your bio. Let's talk about everything else. Highlights, cool. I like when all the highlights, um, uh, there's a cohesive feel to them. So yours are all black and white. Similar kind of bold icons. I like that. If you take a look at the DCF one, all of the icons are in a black and blue. I, I designed all those with the same line weights and stuff. Quick, simple little images. So I like highlight covers to be really legible thumbnails. Let's get to everything else. So the way the Instagram set up is in that classic uh, three post for each project. That That's always cool. Uh, let's take a look at some of these pairs. So we got the Jimmy G on one. Big old 49ers logo on the other, and um, uh, always faithful on the back there. Uh, so this is photoshopped. I'm uh, yes, this is photoshopped onto a, um, a a grungy type background. This was probably just shot up against you know white background or something like that. I'm a fan of it. Add uh, to make it look a little bit more real. You want some shadows, so like some drop shadow behind the shoes to make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, so yes, but but I but I also appreciate that because that's variety, that's switching up the content, that's that's testing different things. So good stuff there. Um, and I think that's the first time I've seen you play with some Photoshop stuff. So cool stuff. Keep playing with that. Here we have uh, Galaxy Slides. This is cool. We got a nice tight little detail shot here. We got an on foot shot here. And then this is sort of your money shot here. Cool stuff. You know what I mean? You have three posts for each project and you make each post have something different. The one thing that I want to see you play with more now is video, of course, too. Butterfly Air Forces. Dope, solid, clean, um, legible, bold. They pop. This is a design that a lot of people are going to like. Good stuff. We zoom in there. 14 years old. Check out that line work. Looks better than uh, a lot of people's stuff. Good CW man, you're gonna you're gonna make a name for yourself. Um, f you're gonna make a name for yourself, buddy. You're onto something. Uh, yellow and purple, complementary colors. Two of the hardest colors to fade. That's a solid fade. That's a solid fade. St stencil work, solid. The eight the Mamba logo on the tongue tag, solid stuff. Um, now, now let's take a look at this. Th there's an improvement here already. This gradient of this pink to teal. Um, I'm sure you won't mind me saying this, buddy, because, hey, we're all here to improve. This gradient is 10 times better than this gradient. You see how it's just, it's just half and half. There's a hard cut. You see exactly where both colors start and stop. Whereas when you're looking, sorry, when you're looking at this gradient, you don't know where the color start and stop because it's it's soft. You know what I mean? And that's not an easy gradient to do. So, yeah, I'm trying to remember when we last reviewed your page. I think it might have been, you know, maybe like to here at some point. I think it might have been with these uh, Lamar shoes back in March. And, yeah, I mean, huge improvement. Miles, this is a this is a much better gradient, too. On these, uh, are these Cortezes? They have a different, are those Cortezes? I think they are. The sole looks different. But yeah, man, cool stuff. Huge, huge improvement. Space Jam Customs, those look good. Yeah, wow. CW, huge improvement. 14 years old. That's, what, I mean, what are you like? In eighth grade, a freshman in high school? What are you, running a business and making money? I was, yeah, I was, I was not doing nothing productive at 14. So this is awesome. 
I wasn't thinking about running a business in an Instagram and and <laughs> setting st this is this is insane. This is so cool. I'm I'm so excited for um the next generation. I'm I'm so excited to see you know where are people like CW and Con um in in 10 years from now. Who knows if they're even doing custom shoes, but to to have a business mindset at that age. Um Awesome. Instagram wasn't around when I was that age, so it's not that I didn't have, it's not that I didn't want to do business. Like, I did random things with my friends. Like, we would go around and try to cut people's grass or shovel snow or, or do anything for a buck, you know what I mean? But we didn't have all this stuff at our fingertips, so. Um, let's see here. Yeah, CW, great stuff, buddy. Great stuff here. We had a couple Super Chats come in. Let's go ahead and check these out. Battle Rap Opinion says, can you give us a full high gloss series? Thanks for sharing your custom knowledge with us. Absolutely. High gloss is something that we do need to uh, spend a little bit more time um, touching on for sure. We do have a video on it just in case you didn't see that one um, a few weeks back. I think it's called how to, how to Achieve a High Gloss Finish. Check that one out if you haven't already, but it is something that we do want to do more on. Uh, Lisbon Basulto, I probably butchered that name. I'm, I'm so sorry. Send in, in a super chat with a currency that I'm not even uh, sure. Let me know what country you're from. Uh, this The currency is S-E-K. I am not too sure what currency that is, but uh, the message says, can you please check MB Luxury Art and give me some advice on how to mix the content of art I have there and the uh, customs I will do? Yes, so Lisband, let me know what country you're from. Super cool. Thank you for that. And then a, another super chat from Pitbull Custom Shoes cause, uh, says, can you check out the very few customs I have, please? Pitbull Custom Shoes 76. Uh, we will check that out right after we do list bands. Let's see. Uh, let's see. So MB Luxury Art. So just something to consider. I'm always, I'm always just going to say what comes into my head first. So as I type in MB Luxury, as you guys can see, I haven't even started to type in the art, but there is already one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a ton of a ton of pages that have a similar name of MB Luxury something. Just something to consider that it, it takes a while to, to get to yours specifically. So let's see here. Oh, okay, so let me see, can you please, it was how to mix the content of art I have there and the customs I will do. Uh, let me see here. It's my husband's YouTube, he is from Cuba. I am from Bosnia and we live in Sweden. Ah, okay, so it's very cool. Uh, let's see. So I'm, I am on the right page, right? Hand-painted wearable art, custom design shoes, bags, wallets, exclusive art prints, and limited editions, and some unique pieces uh, to order DM. So, uh, okay, so it looks like uh, this is also something that, that, hey, I'm into. I'm into some cool interior design stuff. Looks like you have a cool style of these uh, one-line drawings. This is cool. Yeah, I would love to see. Uh, I would love to see you start to bring some of this one line stuff into the uh, custom sneaker realm. Uh, very cool. Yeah, this is this is cool stuff. I'm a fan. Look at all this. It's just it's just cool to see. It's just you have such a dope style. I would love to see you uh, try it on some shoes. Yeah, I love all the uh, interior design shots. Um, it certainly has a, a high-end, luxurious, museum-type feel, so the, the photography and all that stuff is uh, really good. Really good. Let's check out some of these highlights here. Okay, here's some shoes. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that style work looks dope on shoes. Cool workspace. Yep, 
some time lapse stuff. Dope. Dope. Okay, so says um, how to mix the content with the pictures of customs later. I would like to have the same Instagram for both. Ooh, okay, okay. So how would we put custom sneakers onto an Instagram like this? Very interesting, very interesting because if we just talk about the scale of shoes, you know, typically compared to these interior design type shots, you know, the shoes would be relatively small compared to the rest of the stuff here that the shoes wouldn't be taking up a lot of the frame. So how would you get these in there? That's interesting. You know what? Okay. Let me know if I'm crazy, but here's an idea. I believe all of this is photoshopped. So I don't know if you take the pictures of the interiors and then photoshopping your drawings, which I think is the case. Let me know if you take the original pictures of the interiors or if you find pictures of the interiors online and then Photoshop in your drawings. Because what might be cool is, um, well might, yeah, that it might be a cool idea is to continue the pictures of the interiors, but what if the photos or the prints were pictures of the shoes instead so let's say that right now you know we're looking at this living room interior or whatever it may be and rather than just looking at mickey mouse you find them so you find these pictures of these interiors yeah what if this was a picture of a pair of shoes that you painted that could be cool that could be cool now just you know how do you sort of um let your audience or your potential clientele know that you're selling the shoes, not necessarily prints of the artwork of the shoes. However, that's a cool option too. You know, you could take some great pictures of your shoes and then who knows, maybe people would be interested in prints of that, but that is absolutely something that um, I would consider because if you're going to do, if you're gonna to continue to do the interior shots, there has to be a way for you to still make the shoes look large because I mean, if we take a look at these, the shoes are gonna be a similar size to these vases on the table, you know? And that's not big enough for them to sort of capture the attention. So that is what I would do. Yeah, that'd be cool. How cool would this Instagram page be, guys, if it was still all these shots of the interiors and then just like this one really sticks out because there's an orange afro? What if that was a painted pair of shoes? That would be awesome. I would do that. I'm excited just thinking about that. Yeah, look at this one, like these lines. I think you had a pair of shoes that had that design... Okay, so it wasn't a lion. That's more of like a dog. But yeah, imagine that as this picture here. That would be dope. That would be dope. Ooh, I, I want to see that. Yeah, that'd be so cool. That's, that's what I would say. And then you could still keep that feel because this is a great example, guys, um, of, of your, your feed just feeling cohesive. And this feed feels very cohesive. It's all these nice modern interior design shots. So that's that's good stuff. That's good stuff. That is what I would I would consider that as as uh that's my best advice. Yep. Cool stuff. But yeah, Marl Dane here says uh keep the shoe size small and make it kind of sneaky. That's absolutely an option too. I mean, if we you know, we we just take a look at at, at a picture like this, let's say the shoes were right where, you know, the books and the glasses are. You know what I mean? And then people are still looking at, then you could be selling multiple pieces of your artwork because you could have the prints of the drawings in the background or, you know, potentially that size there. And then the shoes off to the side there, a sneaky little add-on, that would be cool too. A lot of cool stuff you do here, but I love this feed. Uh, really excited to see where you take it. Okay, we had a bunch of Super Chats come in. I know Pipple was the next one. Let's go ahead, check that out. Thank you guys for sending those in. Truly appreciate that. Let's see here. Um, also, I, I just want to be 100% transparent with you guys. You do not have to send in a Super Chat for me to review your Instagram. That is not the case. Uh, you guys, at, at this point... With, with 150 plus videos, a, a 10 hour live stream, all these weekly Q and A's, you guys know me, it's not just about, uh, hopefully you guys know me that it's not just about 
Send in super chats. That's the only way I answer your questions or, or anything like that. Of course, the ones that do truly appreciate it. It means a lot to us. It goes right back into the uh, to the business, to the page, to the production quality, and uh, we just appreciate you doing that for us. So uh, let's go ahead and check out Pitbull Custom Shoes seventy six. Okay, so just. Like always, I'm just going to kind of give my opinion, things that come to my mind quickly. That's a long name. Just going to say that. My name's super long, too. The Hazus Custom Footwear, that is super long. Uh, bio, short and sweet. If you need custom kicks, let me know. Let's see here. So we got some Air Force mids. Uh, you guys will always hear me talk about this. Pictures up against the bed sheets and blankets. Number one, everybody does this. Number one go-to, don't do this. But this is cool too, showing the little mock-up to where it's gonna to where it's gonna end up. I like seeing some progress shots. Um, <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> uh, the candy canes with the duct tape. That's funny. Oh, okay. The the Phillies Air Forces. These are dope. These you went outside, took some pictures. Uh, you know, on a baseball diamond or something like that. That's cool stuff. Um, I, I like seeing all the progress shots of these. Um, let's see what else here. Yeah, these Rasta uh, Drip Air Forces. I know you sent these to me. These look dope. Um, the logo, cool, cool. Yep, the Gucci Drip Air Forces. Good stuff. Okay, and then the rest is your other content. So, yeah. Um, photography. Photography, photography, photography. Um, but the artwork looks solid. I mean, like, if we just take a look at these uh, marijuana leaf plants, they look, the, the stencil work is, I mean, that is, that's crispy. That is crispy. Got to go back, do some touch-ups around the swish, all those edges and whatnot. Um, yeah, I like seeing the, the mock-up first and then, and then bringing it to life. These Phillies turned out awesome. These Air Forces turned out dope. Those pinstripes, that's not easy to do. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I like that you are, uh, I like that you're posting your mock-ups too. Just getting more content out of everything, and it's always cool to play with your designs first. So that's good stuff. I'd love to see these come to life, these Bob Marleys. That's dope. That's cool stuff. So yeah, you know, you guys know me. You you, you already know what I'm going to say. The photography um, could just be improved. But little things like this, like just sort of how you see your door in the background and then, you know, the flowers. Just This could be uh, your framing, your composition could be a little bit better to where it's just about the shoes, sort of. Um, you know, same thing here, like how the shoes are sort of cropped off. That's not bad because you could say here, hey, I'm going for a detail shot to where you sort of see the Phillies logo and the baseball. But that could be just sort of how you frame your shot could be a little bit cleaner. Um, you know, if you're, if you're if, you know, you went to the park to get the nice shots, that's cool. And, you know, you have the multiple shots. So what I would do is try to have, you know, maybe one money shot and then a couple detail shots to show off. Here, I'm trying to show off the logos. Like this shot almost looks better if it's like this, like let's say, Man, you guys can't see my finger, but let's say that shoe that's on the right side of the frame was scooted a little bit more in front of that other shoe. Um, I wish I, I need to find a way to draw on uh, my phone with with the with the stylus. That'll be cool. But if you brought that a little bit more forward, and then the shot was kind of just of the logos, that would be a really cool uh, detail shot. But you know, framing your money shot here of trying to show that it's on, you know. A field and you have the baseball glove and the ball and then the and then the shoes you know what I mean just little things like that will just make the product look a whole lot more premium but good stuff man good stuff buddy looks like you're hosting a, doing a custom Air Force One giveaway good giveaway is always a great way to uh, expand your audience and whatnot so yeah good stuff man test out some different forms of content video and stuff I like that you're doing a lot of progress shots, you know what I mean? Out of these Phillies Air Force Ones, you got mock-up, 
one, two, three, four, five, six plus posts. That's awesome when you're just starting out and you and you're needing to uh, build out um, build out your content. So yeah, good stuff, Pitbull. Good stuff. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Next gen customs with the super chat. Thank you. Would love to watch live reaction. Uh, let's see here. Uh, next gen. Uh, we will we will do a couple more guys, and then we will call it a day. So let's see here. Next gen customs. Uh, exclusive custom footwear located in the UK. Your personal Instagram DM. Email me for inquiries. I like the uh, I like the highlights of. Um, the little story covers there. This is already very similar to what I sort of mentioned on, on how they look. And uh, yeah, let's see what, what we have on the story here. Oh, nice shot. Okay, so yeah, look at that. They're not playing around when it comes to the uh, photography and stuff, so I'm excited to see it. Oh yeah, let's see. So not a time-lapse, a, a real-time packing in some detail into these beautiful roses on these air forces i'm excited to see these done oh look at that look at that the toothpick gang makes an appearance that's cool i'm a, yeah i'm excited to see those i can't wait to see those when those are done uh make sure you send those to me this is cool doing a, a transfer of the dior print yeah look at the the oh that's a cool shot I like that shot. Yep. Like this is a this is a good custom sneaker shot. This is the type of stuff that can get reposted by the big sneaker pages, which is um it's not everything, but but that's something that you're going for because it's free uh exposure and free advertisement. You would love to get rep reposted by some of the big pages, and you do that with clean photography. And this is clean. This is good stuff. Um yeah, I would love to see some of uh like i would love to see how this shot turns out with the is that one with the dior print yeah it looks like it with the black background so the white air forces and i think that's 3m so the 3m is really gonna pop would love to see those here we have a igtv video of uh, a little bit of the process so that's cool switching it up as far as video some nice detail shots like this some uh some nice money shots cool stuff Good stuff. Yeah, this is a great page. I am. Uh, I'm really excited to see these uh, rose print air forces. Those are. Those are dope. Great job on those so far. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Next gen. Good stuff. Uh, okay, let's see here. Uh, we have one from uh, Super Chat from 2D. Just started. Can you check 2D customizes and tips? Let's see. Uh, thank you for that, 2D. 2D customizes. Okay, so 2D customizes. It's got the logo, uh, sneaker customizer, SoCal DM for orders. Get your sneakers while hot. So we have six posts here. Let's go ahead and check these out real quick. Uh, Bob Ross Edition Air Forces. Those are dope. That is, yeah, Bob Ross. That's fun to do. Those turned out awesome. We have some LV print vans. Looks like we have a video. Let's, uh, Will I get sound? Nope, I don't get sound. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna, it's not a TikTok video, but I'm curious if it's uh, gonna be similar in that you sort of show all the steps of your process. Yeah, laying down that vinyl. Cool, cool. And now the final shot. Yeah, that's cool. I like that, that's good video. Splatter print from Mike on these, uh, Air Forces with some Bulls color blocking. Now you'd want to go back and make sure you touch up some of those uh, areas where the red got onto the white, of course. But the splatter looks dope. The splatter on the 23. I dig that. We got a video of those. Oh, we, we do have a TikTok. Okay, cool. Yep. That's dope. That's dope. Dig that. Twenty three, forty five, yeah, cool stuff, cool stuff, Tootie. Got the NMDs with the painted pods and uh, the stripes, and then is this? Uh, yeah, it's, one thing that I like here. Um, 
you have six posts and three of them are videos. A lot of people are scared of video because it could be a little bit more work, but I love that you're, you're testing out a lot of videos. So continue to do that. Of course, the photography, you know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, this is the, the framing of this could be a whole lot better. If we take a look at the entire shot, look at a shot like this. It's this tall. The shoes take up this much space. The shoes take up not even a third. If, we, if you talked about the magical rule of thirds in photography, which is not always going to apply to an Instagram post, since you're trying to take up a lot of real estate, you want the shoes to take up a lot of real estate. So I think that your framing composition could be a little bit better here. Uh, it's in direct sunlight, so hard to sometimes things get overexposed edit the photos it's going to make the colors the details pop a whole lot more here this is just this is just not a great shot that you see your arm you know what i mean it's kind of funny it almost looks like you have a huge bicep there um but i'm assuming yeah because this is your phone over here on the side so just how you it's, it's hard to shoot in direct sunlight and just little things like this to just make it look more professional of course you don't want your shadow in the uh in the background there so yeah just just little things like that uh, you don't want these black borders here on these uh, Bob Ross Air Forces. So yeah, just just little stuff. Just look at look at custom sneaker artists that you really look up to and see how are, how are they uh, composing shots and framing their photography. Um, I, I just can't stress photography enough, guys. It is uh, uh, it's just I, I mean you you look at you look at you look at people who are succeeding in the industry, and I think you'll notice they spend a lot of time on their uh, photography. So yeah, good stuff. Keep up the good work, Tootie. Keep up the good work, Next Gen, Pitbull, and everybody else that we did. Uh, this will be the last one of the day, guys. We are going to do uh, Kobe with the Super Chat. Thank you for that, Kobe. Kobe Creates. Let's see. This is going to be our last one of the day, guys. And then we will call it a show. Kobe creates. Okay, I am a 13-year-old kid who loves to customize shoes. Shoot me a DM if you want some. Located in Houston, the price is a $5, $5 hourly rate. Road to 100. So cool stuff as far as the bio. Um, I think that you could split it up a little bit better how it's sort of like one long sentence here. If you broke it up into sort of bullet point format, that'll make it a little bit more just clean. Um, um but, but yeah let's take a look at some of the stuff here so here we have some quick mock-ups here we have a pair of lebrons it says doing a pewdiepie custom here we have uh let's see uh i'm not sure this base shoe it might be a, a team jordan so some of the uh the donut print on the swish with the drip uh fire and water custom on the converse cool stuff look at these roses on these adidas oh look at this look at some of the doodle work awesome stuff here we have uh, some cartoon the car chicago colorway on these cartoon jordans the toon squad logo look, look at that look at it. from nine years old to even be able to to somewhat do this toon squad logo phenomenal phenomenal Look at this. There's a gradient here. That's not easy to do. Um, yeah, there's a gradient here with this little sunset. I mean, nine years old. So nine years old, you're like in third grade or fourth grade. I mean, I said I was eating dirt when I was like 14. Who knows what I was even doing? Nine? I mean, nine years old. My goodness. I mean, great stuff, Kobe. Great stuff. I mean, super cool to see you even that you've done. I mean, there was probably 10 pairs on this page. Awesome stuff, man. Awesome stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Same things that, that to the stuff that I would say to everybody, I would love to see some videos, some time-lapse stuff from you of creating. You know what I mean? That would be cool to see. Um, other than that, uh, there's some pictures of you, which is cool. I would love to see, yeah, like some videos, some animation type stuff. I would love to see some, you're switching it up. You have some nice detail shots. Um, I would shoot, um, um, assuming that you have, but you're nine. So, but yeah, if you have Instagram, you probably have a phone. Do not, so nine year olds have phones nowadays, huh? When did I get my first phone? Probably 13. Yeah, I guess everybody's getting phones, uh, even younger nowadays, but it, let's say you have an iPhone. 
just go outside, shoot your shoes on the concrete. That will make, sort of like these, you did it here. You know what I mean? The concrete will always make for a great starter background. Um, wow, nine years old, great stuff, buddy. Road to 100 followers, everybody go ahead. Give my man, Kobe Creates, a follow. Uh, th oh, 13, why do I keep saying nine? Uh, forgive me, 13, it says right there too. Um, long week, guys, long week. But 13 years old, uh, great stuff. Uh, would love to see what the uh, future holds for you, man. Yeah, on the highlights here too. Let's see these. Yep, more of the more of that rose print. Cool stuff, man. Cool stuff. Keep up the great work. All right, guys, that is going to do it for us. Uh, thank you for joining us for another episode of DCF Live. Truly appreciate everybody tuning in. Thank you for everybody sending in those super chats. That means a lot to us. Um, the chat was flying today. Hopefully I was not able to get to, uh, sorry, I wasn't able to get to uh, everybody. There was tons of great questions. Of course, uh, it's never personal. We try to get to as many as we possibly can. Thank you to all of our mods. Keeping the chat flowing, keeping the chat going. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, have checked out the two videos that we released this week. We had a uh, Artist Reacts to TikTok videos and then a uh, Episode 7 of Reviewing Your Custom. So... Uh, I'll just say them one more time. If you're interested in episode eight of Reviewing Your Customs, we're hoping to do all first timers. Uh, send your submissions to contact at thehazusinc.com with the subject line first timers. That's how we're going to sort through them all. And uh, we just announced our floral contest. That is going to be all submissions are due Friday, July 31st. Could be any shoe, any sneaker, any heel, any slide. Could be anything. Just has to be footwear. Really looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, this was a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll see you guys next week.